at the subway stop underneath the Twin Towers at 823 when the first plane hit that wasn't on that subway because the night before he got called out of town on a special trip that he had to go to Atlanta for. That morning he's in Atlanta when, the, when he should have been killed at the Twin Towers. I have, we have situations like that, right? Um, and it doesn't, I can't speak to the people who died. I can't, you know, I can't. But I just wonder what was happening in the hearts of people around the world. Because I know what happened to me. And what happened to me was I was convicted of the sins of my nation. And I was repenting for the sins of our nation that morning when I was sitting in the shower. And I did not know why I was repenting. I just knew that there was this weight on me and I wanted it off. And I read this verse and I think, I wonder if that's what Daniel was feeling. It's like he felt the weight of it. It was like it's time for us to be delivered from this bondage. And he felt that weight and he began fasting and he began praying. And he began crying out to the Lord. And the Lord ends up then replying in verse 20. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God on his whole, on the, for the holy mountain, for Jerusalem, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly. Remember we were talking about the angelology? Seraph angels have six wings, two to cover their eyes, two to cover their feet, two to fly with. They stand in the presence of God. God speaks to them, gave them messages to take to humanity. Their responsibility was to fly swiftly to take the message. It says that he was being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. In other words, the evening offering. He informed me and he talked with me and he said, Oh Daniel, I am now come to give you skill and understanding. Verse 23. At the beginning of your supplications, I came to show you, for you are greatly beloved. So therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. And now he starts to give us the explanation. Seventy weeks are determined. So if you hear of Daniel's 70 weeks, this is where it comes from. It's Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon your people and upon the holy city. For what? And it's going to give us a list. Are you ready? This is a numeric list. Enumerated list. Sorry. Seventy weeks are determined upon your people and upon your holy city. One, to finish the transgression. Two, to make an end of sins. Three, to make, in, to make reconciliation for iniquity. Four, to bring everlasting righteousness. Five, to seal up the vision and prophecy. And six, to anoint the most holy. Seventy weeks. Are, are designated, determined upon your people to finish transgression, make an end of sins, make reconciliation for iniquity, bring everlasting righteousness, seal up the vision and the prophecy, and anoint the most holy. Those six things. These 70 weeks are supposed to accomplish those six things. It's very, 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 very important that we understand these six things because these right here I've got a card here. I'll show you in just a little bit. These, these things right here. Sorry. <laughs> these things right here time out to within weeks of Jesus. Uh, and I'll show you how Jesus fulfilled the first four of these six. So interesting. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth. Catch this. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince will be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street will be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. And after three score and two and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof will be with a flood, and to the end of the war, there's the first reference to war, to the end of the war, desolations are determined. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he'll cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he'll make it desolate, even to the consummation, and that determined will, pour, be, will be poured upon the desolate. So there's a lot of symbology in there, right? But let's look at it. Super interesting. Let's talk about verse 24 first. Okay. 
Seventy weeks are determined upon your people in the holy city. We said this to what? To finish transgression, to make an end of sins, to make a reconciliation for iniquity, to bring everlasting righteousness. Those four things were fulfilled by Jesus. Those four things. Finish transgression, that means that the transgression of Israel had been paid for. The sin that they had previously done, God told them that they were going to be in exile for X number of years. That, ex split, that exile was done. To make an end of sins happen in Jesus. To make a reconciliation for iniquity happen in Jesus. And to bring in everlasting righteousness happen in Jesus. And then, there's a portion of that time that's to seal up the judgments. And then, there's a point to anoint the most holy, which is going to be Jesus. So here's what we have in this. We have these items, these four. We have Israel's, Israel fulfills its, its, its uh, punishment for its rebellion. Then you've got these items for Jesus that happen in his life. Make it, he makes an end of sin, reconciles for iniquity, and brings everlasting righteousness. Then there's a period of time where the vision is sealed up. And then there is a time where the Most Holy One is anointed. Now back in Daniel chapter 7, we read about how the one that looked like the Son of Man was brought to the Ancient of Days. Remember that? It said he was brought before the Ancient of Days. And he was given a kingdom that never ended. The anointing of the Most Holy. The Millennial Kingdom of Jesus. The anointing of the Most Holy. Jesus is brought. He fulfills His Millennial Kingdom. Jesus is the Most Holy. So what we've, or what we've got here is this then. Uh, it says, Know this, going, from the going forth of the commandment to restore, verse 25, and rebuild Jerusalem to the Messiah the Prince will be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So, I'm thinking should not be too hard to figure out when the call went forth to restore Jerusalem. So I did some research. There is some, it's very interesting. Anytime you see, anytime you see the Jewish people doing anything they can possibly do to screw up history, you have to assume it's got something to do with Jesus. And I'm just telling you, the reason why is because they reject Jesus. I sat in a class uh, I sat in a class for, it was, called, it, was, it was a class, it was Moshiach, it was a Moshiach class, taught by a Jewish rabbi, one of the best classes, one of the most enjoyable classes I ever sat in, I did it through Chabad, not a word. Great, great organization, great site, all Jewish, not Messianic in any way, shape, or form. In this class, they refused to ever say the name Jesus. They would not say it, they would not respond to it, they, you'd say Jesus, they would not say Jesus back. Absolutely refused to. They would always respond with historic personalities. Some historic personalities. Some historic personalities. Anything that the Jewish people can do to try to draw attention away from Jesus, they will purposely do. It's just the way that they are. They, re they wholeheartedly reject it. Wholeheartedly. By the time we were done with this class, I asked the question, how do you know who the real Messiah is? Because we were talking about Mashiach, right? How do you know? And this was their response. He said, we believe that every generation has the true Messiah in it. There is a man who will be, who could be, the true Messiah. And the only thing that will make them the true Messiah is when the nation of Israel finally accepts him. That is the true Messiah. Talk about idolatry. Holy cow. You're God when I say you are. <laughs> right? Every generation has a Messiah. The one true Messiah is the one that the nation of Israel finally accepts. I sat through that class and I listened and I'm like, you are so primed to receive the Antichrist. Because he's going to come. He's going to say, I'm Messiah. He's going to elevate himself to the heavens. It's going to, that's what they're looking for. They have a conquer.